Lesson three, significant figures. It's often abbreviated sig figs for short. Or sometimes you'll see it significant digits and it's abbreviated sig digs for short. So you'll see that often, especially if you go into the sciences and post-secondary school. Significant figures. And we ask this question, what's the difference between $600 and $599.87? Besides the obvious, well, 13 cents. Probably one number is more accurate than the other. If you tell me something costs $600, I don't think it cost exactly six zero zero point zero zero dollars. I suspect you round it off. But if you tell me it costs five hundred ninety nine dollars and eighty seven cents, then Serenity, I'm pretty sure it cost five hundred ninety nine dollars and eighty seven cents. There's different levels of accuracy. And the question then becomes, Sophia, what do we do when we're comparing measurements from instruments that have different levels of accuracy? Justin, behind you, over your left shoulder, there's a digital scale sitting on the counter. That is accurate to the nearest thousandth of a gram. It's a very, very accurate scale. It's accurate enough that if you breathe on it, the scale will change. And then also behind you on the shelf, there are some meter sticks. Those aren't even accurate to one decimal place because they measure centimeters, but they don't go to millimeters. They're terrible. What if I was using both of those in a lab to make measurements and I drew a conclusion? How accurate can I say my results are? That's what sig figs were invented for. These are the rules that we use to compare measurements of different accuracies and then report our results. Got the problem? Now, having said that, Jimmy, for most of this year, I'm going to ignore sig figs because most of the equipment that I'm going to give you is horrible. It's got an accuracy level of about one decimal place or one digit, actually, which means that all of our stuff is going to be nonsense. So we're going to ignore it and just pretend we're using good equipment, but we won't be. What's the difference between $600 and $599.87? One is more precise than the other. Scientifically, we say one has more significant or measured or relevant figures than the other. Look up. 600 has one significant digit. $599.87 has five. The rules for sig figs are tricky to explain in English, it's much easier for me to show you a bunch of examples, have you spot the pattern, and then I will write the rules in English. So how many sig figs does each of these have? That's one. That's two. How many sig figs does C have, do you think? Three. Now we get tricky. How many sig figs does D have? I'll give you a hint, not three. That's two. Zeros on the end of a number are assumed to be rounded off, not measured, and so they're not significant. How many sig figs does 1300 have? Two. How many sig figs does 13,000 have? How many sig figs does 13,001 have? Now we assume, since those zeros are in the middle of other numbers, that those were measured. We assume that we measured to that one, and just by a fluke, these just happened to be zeros when we collected the data. So this is going to be six sig figs. How many sig figs does 20 have? What if I was actually measuring to this zero, and it was a zero? In other words, what if I was measuring to two sig figs of accuracy, and it just happened to be a zero? How would I show that? I would put a little decimal point right there. This has two sig figs, and that decimal point is saying to you, look, I measured that far. It just happened to be a zero on my ruler. It's not that I rounded off right there. So that's the rule for sig figs for numbers bigger than one, for non-decimal numbers. What about for small numbers? How many sig figs? Two. How many sig figs? Three.
How many sig figs? Not two. This is three. Now, reason this is three is for decimals, the only reason I would have stuck that zero on there is if I'd actually measured that accurately and on my ruler or on my scale or whatever device I was using, it happened to display a zero there. So that's three sig figs. How many sig figs? That's five sig figs. How many sig figs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sig figs. How many sig figs? That's four. Because why else would I have added those two zeros after the decimal point? I guess the ruler that I was using was actually accurate to two decimal places, and it just so happened that when I measured it, it worked out to exactly 20.00. So that's four. Scientific notation is really nice for sig figs. How many sig figs? Three. How many sig figs? Four. How many sig figs? Five. Because with scientific notation, you're always writing one digit in front of the decimal and the rest after the decimal. You just count the number of digits. So that's one place where scientific notation has an advantage. So now I'm going to try and explain what we just did in English. But you spotted the pattern okay by doing a bunch of examples. Now I'm going to try to, Logan, explain how we do this. So rules for sig figs. Any non-zero digit counts. 456. How many sig figs? Three. 0.9723, how many sig figs? The tricky part is when there's zeros. Zeros to the left of a decimal point count. So I have 690, I have 690. One of these has three sig figs, one of these has two sig figs. Which one has three sig figs? First one or second one? Three sig figs, two sig figs. Turn the page. Zeros to the right of a decimal point are tricky. If there are non-zero numbers to the left of the decimal, we count them. Otherwise, we ignore them. So here's several, 67.00, how many sig figs? That's four. 67.0001, 0 0.00035. Are you seeing why it's easier to do a bunch of examples? Because to try and explain this in English is just confusing. But I usually, kids, when I do a bunch of examples, they pick it up. 0 0.00305, three. Those front zeros don't count. 0 0.008900. Which one, two or four? This is four. So the first skill we have to be able to pull off, Jared, is can we count the number of sig figs? Now we can talk about the rules for multiplying and dividing and the rules for adding and subtracting. The multiplying and dividing rule is the easiest. The adding and subtracting rule is a pain. Thankfully, most of the time in physics, we'll be multiplying and dividing. I think I went on this rant last day, but I'm going to mention it again. I love the fact that Serenity is wearing a shirt that says the word lazy on it. I'm going to be lazy but organized. So I'm going to go you, give you the method that works for me that guarantees that I'll get the right answer with the minimum amount of writing. And I'll typically go to that. Okay. This is what you used to call rounding off. But in physics or in chemistry, really in science, this is how we compare numbers that have different sig figs. The first thing is you type the answer into your calculator as is. So all of you go 6.74 times 2.0002 on your calculator. You never round off beforehand. And then just keep that number on your calculator. You should all have 13.481348, which we're not going to write. Here is the rule for multiplying and for dividing. Jimmy, this first number, 6.74, how many sig figs? Three. Write a little tiny, really tiny three above it. This second number, 2.0002, how many sig figs? Five. Write a little five there. 
What's the smallest number I just wrote? I'm going to round to three sig figs. That's the rule. You round to the smallest number of sig figs and you're dead. Now, what does that mean? Jimmy, count with me. One, two. The third sig fig is that four. Is that four going to stay a four or is it going to become a five? What's right next to that four? An eight. So am I going to write 13.4 or 13.5? That's how you do it. Probably partway through the homework sky, many of you will reach the point where you don't even need to write those numbers. In our notes, we'll put them there so that when you're studying later on, you know what the heck we did. The rule for dividing is the same. So I'm going to not round off ahead of time. I'm going to go 6.4 divided by 9.088. Chase, 6.4, how many sig figs? 9.088, how many sig figs? I wrote a little two, I wrote a little four. So what's the smallest number I just wrote? And this is why I say you can kind of track it in your head. Two, you say? So not the first digit, the second digit right there, that zero. Is that zero going to stay a zero or become a one? What's right next to the zero? So what are the rules for rounding that you learn in math eight? Does it stay a zero or does it get bumped up? And now you're seeing why you sometimes have to add a zero on the end of a number. This would end up being 0 0.7. I have to put a zero there because that's to two sig figs and it was a zero. Right. Hope you know the rule for rounding. If it's five or bigger, it goes up. If it's four or smaller, it stays, right? So rule number one, you never round off till all your calculations are finished. Rule number two, you round off to the smallest number of sig figs represented in your original data. So here are four questions that are very, very similar. I'm not going to freeze the screen, but I'm not going to talk you through it. Try doing these four on your own and see if then when you look up, we all get the same answers. I really want to create a classroom where it's okay to make mistakes, and I really believe that. I have that sign over there, mistakes are expected, respected, inspected, corrected. It's a good way to learn, so I'm always going to pause now and say, are there any of these that you got wrong and you can't figure out why the heck I wrote the answer that I got? Now, you can ask me. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. This is a new topic. Any of these you're wondering about? Go on once. Logan, which one are you wondering about? You. What do you mean by wh which one? Example one, two, three, or sorry, two. So example two, I went uh, thirteen point five six seven times five point five two sig figs. Yes, Logan. So right there, what's next to the four? What, no, to the right of the four. No, what number is to the right of the four? So this gets bumped up to a five. That's the rule. Is that okay? Yep. Number one. So number one, five sig figs, three sig figs. I'm going to go to three sig figs. The original question was that, so I typed it in. The seven is one sig fig. Did I do number one wrong? No, I'm missing a digit, Mr. Duick. Sheesh. Typed it in wrong. 
One sig fig is the seven. The second sig fig is the five. The third sig fig is the four. What's to the right of the four? What came after the four? A three? Oh yeah. I can't make it any bigger, sorry. So a three. So the four is gonna stay a four. Let me make that cursor at least. The four is gonna stay a four, it's not gonna become a five. So the four is the third sig fig, starting from the left and counting. Three sig figs, four stays a four. I'll give you a bunch of these to practice. Sadly, that's the easy rule. The adding and subtracting rule, a little different. So, what's the adding and subtracting rule? The first thing that you need to do is you need to write the question vertically. Don't write this down. In other words, if they give me 12.16 plus 3.245 plus 9.8, the first thing that I would do is I would write it vertically. I did the first one for you. What's the rule? As before, Sam, we don't round off before we go to our calculator. So all of you type this exactly into your calculator. I get 4.567 plus 9.0. I didn't need to type the point zero. It didn't change the answer. But just so you can see, I typed it in as is. And I get 13.567, which I'm not going to write. The rule for adding and subtracting, you do not count. You don't go uh, four sig figs, two sig figs, I'm going to go to two sig figs. Instead, this is why you write things vertically, do you notice I know both the numbers in that column? I know both the numbers in that column. But here, I don't know what number is there. It's 9.0 something, but I don't know what went there. That is the second decimal place. I'm going to round to the second decimal place. So if I look at my 13.567, Gabe, the second decimal place is the 6. Is the 6 going to stay a 6 or become a 7? How do you know? Bigger than 5. So final answer is going to be 13.56, which happens to have four sig figs, but that has nothing to do with the fact that one of these had four sig figs. So the rule is you use all the known digits in the calculation. Don't round off before you go to calculator. And then you round off. Sorry, folks, I did this dumbly and I apologize. I round off to the last decimal that I know. I shouldn't have gone to two decimal places. I should have gone to one decimal place. So I apologize, my angels. I should have stopped at the five. Dumb. What comes next to the five? A six. So is that five going to stay a five or become a six? I'm going to put this lesson on YouTube just so people know that I also make mistakes. It's 13.6. Three sig figs, which you'll notice none of my original data had. It was four sig figs, two sig figs. For adding and subtracting, you stop at the first column where you still know everything. So I gave you another one here, this example. Let's do it up here because I have room. The first thing that I would do is I would write this vertically, lining up all the digits. In other words, I would go 19.324 plus 2.15, keeping the decimal point in line, take away 8.6. Six, seven, eight, nine. Kieran, can you see my first gap is right there? I'm going to round off to that decimal place, which in this case is the second. Go to my calculator and I type it in as is. 19.324 plus 2.15, take away 8.3. Six seven eight nine. Uh, by the way, in my original data here, it looks like I have five sig figs, three sig figs, and five sig figs. Uh, I'm going to round to the second decimal place 
Matt, what's sitting in the second decimal place? The nine. Is the nine going to stay a nine or become a zero? Why? Now, as soon as that becomes a zero, that's also going to bump this seven up and it's going to become an? And again, now you're seeing why I sometimes have to add extra zeros at the end of a decimal because it is a zero. Not because I guessed that number. Mr. Dilek. What, Alec? Good yawn? Is there a better way that I can do this in my head without rewriting everything? Yeah. So this will work. And if you wrap your brain around this, this is fine. I'm going to make up one more example here, and I'll show you how this can be done on your head. So for multiplying and dividing, smallest number of sig figs in your data. For adding and subtracting, I'll give you a better way. So let's just make up another example right here. 14.638 uh, plus 2.19 minus 3.6547. If I'm too lazy, nice shirt, Serenity, to uh, read, to rewrite all this, I can do it this way. Not counting sig figs, I'm going to count something different, Julia. Julia, how many decimal places does the first number have? How many decimal places does the second number have? How many decimal places does the last number have? What's the smallest number you just said? I'm going to go to two decimal places, not sig figs, decimal places. Type that into your calculator as is. Fourteen point six three eight plus two point one nine minus three point six five four seven. How many decimal places did we say we we're gonna go, Julia? Two. Thirteen point one seven or one eight? That's a shorter way to do the adding and subtracting, and if you wrap your brain around that, I'm fine if you do it that way. But it comes out of the fact that if we wrote them vertically, that's the first place where we would have a gap. Okay. So, summary. Rules for multiplication and division. Fewest number of sig figs in your data. Rules for addition and subtraction. Least number of decimal places. Homework. You got lots of time to work on this. And also, I know some of you were scrambling to finish the homework off from last day. You can finish that off as well. Do I see you between now and Monday? Your goal is your first real weekend of school, you'll have no homework from Mr. Duick for the weekend, if you can. By the way, my philosophy, if I can try avoiding uh, assigning homework on weekends, I will. I won't always be able to do that, but I will try very hard not to give you homework over a long weekend because... Remember my basic rule? I said act like an adult. Most of your parents, long weekends, they're not taking work home. So why don't I try treating you that way? So if it's a long weekend, you'll often hear me say, well, I see you on Monday, but you can still hand this in on a Wednesday, although I might be giving you some more homework on Monday. But if you take the weekend off, I'm not going to freak out. Okay? And I think here, ha, I did attach the answers. So the answers are attached. You can check your answers. Mr. Duick, do I need to mark my own work? You need to learn from your mistakes and do whatever you need to, Jared, to figure things out. If you want to mark stuff, if you're a person, like, go ahead. If you just want to just double check and not actually put little check marks, go ahead. You should be able to hand in a perfect assignment. Mr. Duick, yes, Logan. What if I just copy the answers down and hand it in? Well, that's kind of dumb because I'll get you on the test. Go ahead. I mean, knock yourself out. I will give you every opportunity to cheat on the homework because I'll get you. Uh, I think I told you in my class, homework is worth 20%. Tests are worth 80%. If you want to cheat on the 20% and fail the 80%, you've got far bigger math issues than just the cheating. You really haven't thought this through. Go ahead. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Any questions? I'll shut up. Oh, also, this is your chance if some of you can't remember how to figure out your calculator or if you want to figure out some bells and whistles, you can pick my brain.